First Timothy chapter 4. Blessed be the name of the Lord, and we'll be reading verses 7 and onward. We read the scripture in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. This is a faithful saying, and worthy of all acceptation. Amen. Let us present the word of God this morning and ask his blessing on our lives. Father God, we give you the praise, the thanks this morning. You have given us life, O oh Lord, and we are here in your house to praise you, to worship you, O oh God, but also to receive from your wonderful word, God. Use your word. May your anointing be upon it, O oh God, and use it in, in a mighty way to bless our lives, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray and we thank you, Lord. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And this morning, we would like to just meditate on the Word of God in a moment. Here, where Paul was giving some advice to Timothy as a young man, but advice that is very essential to us also as uh, Christians, as children of God. Hallelujah. It gives us tips, advice that we need to keep our lives marching on as God wants it to go. Amen. And we see that. He was giving him this advice as a young man, as a young minister of God, where he was, he needed advice. He was among people that did not know the word of God. He was among people that were older than him. He was a young man, no experience in the missionary field, but yet God had chosen him, yet God had put on him a gift that was given, hallelujah, in a special way, amen. So God had a plan for this man's life. God had something special for him. But we see that even though if God has given us something special, even though if he has bestowed on us a gift, a talent, hallelujah, Hallelujah. He still wants us to have some sort of structure, some sort of plan in order to use what he has given us. Amen? And so Paul gives this advice to Timothy. He tells him first to have discipline. In this verse 7 where he talks about refuse the profane and old wise fables. Hallelujah. Glory to the name of the Lord. And exercise yourself rather unto godliness. He talks about that we should have discipline in our lives. He tells Timothy, Timothy, you need to have structure. You need to be dedicated. You need to be a person that has integrity. You need to be a person that is loyal. When he says refuse profane and old wise fables, it means that I should not be listening to things that are not profitable to me, that are not profitable to the spirit of the Lord in my life, to what God has called me to do. I need to refuse them. I need to be a person that has integrity. Integrity means that I do the right thing even though no one is watching. Because even though my pastor is not there, even though my parents are not there, even though my husband or my wife is not there, I know that there is a God that has saved me, that has called me unto holiness, and that even though no one is around, I still do the right thing. I still walk in integrity because he is watching over me, because he is watching over all that he has made. Hallelujah. And his presence is everywhere. And that is why I need to live an in a life with integrity. He was telling Timothy, Timothy, I am not there with you. You have been with me, you have gone with me and, and trips and many other places, but now you're on your own. But you're not on your own, hallelujah, spiritually. God is there with you. So even though I, Paul, am not there with you to watch every single step that you take, know that you need to walk in integrity and be loyal to God who has called you to do the work of the Lord. Amen? And we see he continues to give him advice. He says, bodily exercise profited little. Why does Paul talk about exercise here? Because Timothy was sent unto the Greek. And we know that the Greek were the ones that started with uh, the exercise. Amen. We know the Olympics started in Greece. They were people that were uh, obsessed 
with the bodily exercise, everything needed to be perfect. I need to be uh, 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 fit for everything, hallelujah. And they, it would consume their lives. They would be completely dedicated to only that. And Paul needed Timothy to understand that that profited just a little, which means God wants us to do some exercise, but not that it should consume our lives. And he says, hallelujah, but godliness is profitable unto all things. To live for the Lord, to be able to be a child of God has a profit in every single aspect of your life. Being fit, having a, a life that is uh, uh, completely filled with exercise can give you health, but it doesn't give you happiness. It doesn't make you feel complete. It doesn't give you the joy that the, only the Spirit of God can give you. It's not profitable for your salvation. It is profitable for my life, for my health now, but it, what about afterwards? What about when my eyes close and the Lord takes me up, hallelujah, and I have to face the throne of judgment of the Lord? What about then? Will my exercise be profitable unto me? Will it, ha will it have saved me? Will it, have, will it have done something for me? No, but godliness is profitable unto everything. What Paul was telling Timothy here is that God wants us to be not only healthy on the outside, but also healthy inside, to be holy, to be pure in the presence of the Lord, hallelujah. He wants us to be not only disciplined in a physical way, but disciplined also in the spiritual ways of the Lord, hallelujah, which is profitable unto everything. It says he has a promise of life now and of that which is to come. What does the Word of God say? Our bodies are what? The temple of the Holy Spirit, which means I have to take care of this temple. Amen? We know that we as Christians, as children of God, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do drugs, you don't do any of those things because they affect what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. And God wants the temple to be in an upright manner, to be the best that it can be. That's why we don't uh, 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 just say, Lord, uh, I I'm here, just take care of my health, and I just go around and just be about my business, and I don't keep take care of myself. If I'm a person that suffers from high blood pressure, until God, hallelujah, works a work of healing in my life, I need to take my medication. If I'm a person that suffers from diabetes, I need to take my medication. I can't just go about my life and go eating candy, eating all kinds of things that will affect the temple of the Holy Spirit. I need to take care of myself. But more so, I need to take care of the spiritual temple that God has built in our lives. Amen. In verse 10, he continues to give Timothy advice. He says... For therefore we both labor and suffer reproach, because we trust in the living God, who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe. He was telling Timothy, this is what we suffer for. This is what we work for. This is why we discipline ourselves. Not because, hallelujah, uh, we, we, we like to be reproached, we like to be rejected by the people, we like to be, hallelujah, looked upon. No, we suffer reproach, we labor for the Lord because we are trusting that through this discipline, through integrity, and through loyalty to God, I will be saved even in my life afterwards. How many can praise the Lord? This is why we do it. No other reason. We labor, we suffer reproach because the gospel is a gospel of suffering. God calls us and says, you, you're going to suffer. Paul, the Lord says, take up your cross and follow me. To take up my cross means to take up everything that comes with it. As Jesus carried it, as he carried it with, with pain, with suffering, I also will carry it with pain and suffering, but I will have the help of his hand by my side, helping me to carry the cross, helping me to carry, hallelujah, all the temptations, the trials I will face. He is going to be there with me every single step of the way. But why do I do it? Because I... I want to achieve the prize. What is at the end? This is why we do it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And we have a duty. Paul tells Timothy in verse 11, these things command and teach. This is our duty, 
to teach these things, to teach the Word of God. Nowadays, we have so many other things, philosophies, psychologies, all kinds of things that in a certain degree, benefit, we benefit from it. But it should never replace the mighty and powerful Word of God in our lives. This is what we should teach. This is what we should learn. This is what we should exercise ourselves in. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And he says in verse 12, let no man, don't let anyone despise you just because you're a young man. Be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. He told him, Timothy, although you're a young man, you can be an example. Because usually the youth are the ones we can never take an example of. The youth live a life that is all crazy, no structure, no rules. We live just like we want to live. But Paul said, Timothy, you have to be different. Timothy, you have to set an example. You're going to show these people that even though you're a young man, God is still able to make an example out of you. God is still able to show what he wants from us through your life as a young man. He told him, you're going to be an example. Be an example in your words, in your conversation, what you talk about. What do we talk about? Think for yourself for five seconds. What do I talk about all the time? What consumes my life? Am I always talking about money? Am I always talking about the industry? Am I always talking about business? Am I always talking about other people? What am I talking about? But he told Timothy, Timothy, you are going to be an example. Be careful what you talk about. Be careful in your conversation. Choose your words wisely. Hallelujah. Be careful, hallelujah, in your behavior. Amen. How you conduct yourself among the people. Where do you go? Hallelujah. Be careful and be an example in love. Show love. We know that this world it has a tremendous lack of love. Amen. Amen. This world has a tremendous lack of love. True love, the love of God. Because if, if this world did not lack the love of God, we wouldn't see marches nowadays, people pro-abortion. Because the world has a lack of love. But he said, Timothy, be an example of love. Show love. Be an example of faith. Show the faith that God has bestowed in your life. Show how you believe in God. Trust in Him. Show the Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Show the people the faith that God has put in your life. Be a man of faith. Be a young man of faith. Hallelujah. And He said, be pure. Show purity. Be an example in purity. You know that the youth lack purity. The youth out there, not the youth inside. Amen? The youth out there that don't, don't know the Lord, they lack purity. And Timothy was going to be among them. But God is telling him, Timothy, even though you're going to be among these people, you are going to have to take care of yourself. That's why he said, set a discipline, set a structure in your life, plan, make sure that you are bulletproof by the presence and the word of God. And you have to live pure. That even though in the church or wherever you're going to be working, doing the work of God, there's going to be impurity. But you are going to show purity. You're going to be the example. You're going to be, hallelujah, what they have to follow. What they're going to see and say, hey, I want to be like him. I want to be like Timothy. I want to talk like Timothy talks. I want to walk like Timothy walks. I want to be pure like Timothy is pure. Timothy, how did you become pure? Timothy, how do you have this faith? Hallelujah. And that is going to be the opportunity for God to come and touch those lives. How many praise the Lord? Amen. And he says... In verse 15, meditate upon these things. Amen? Just, just that simple phrase there. Meditate upon these things. What things? He says, till I come, in verse 13, give attendance to reading, exhortation, and doctrine. Don't neglect the gift that is in you, which was given by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. He says, Timothy, while I'm gone, 
It's not that I'm going, oh, Paul is gone. Now I'm going to sit, stretch my legs, and wait for God to do the work. He says, no, Timothy. While I'm gone, meditate on these things. Read. Dedicate yourself to understand what God wants for your life. You're going to be teaching these people, but what are you going to teach if you don't read? What are you going to learn if you don't read? What are you going to tell the people if you don't read? How are you going to show them faith if you don't read? If you don't dedicate, hallelujah, to exhort to the doctrine, the holy doctrine of the Lord and meditate upon these things. As a young man, Timothy needed to meditate and we know that the youth don't meditate. It's not usual for young people to meditate. We just go on impulse. Oh, I like this, let's go. Oh, this is good, let's do it. We just move on impulse, but God needed to teach Timothy. Timothy, it's not on impulse. You need to move when I tell you to move. You need to understand how I move, when I move. You need to understand and learn the sound of my voice through reading the word. And you meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them. That's what it says in verse 15. Give yourself completely. Pour yourself into the scripture. Pour yourself into the word. Pour yourself into my presence. Invite me in your life. Give me your life completely. And you will see what I can do with it. Amen. That I profiting may appear to all. If we live a life where we, we have integrity, we are loyal to God. There is a structure, a spiritual structure. We are disciplined in the word. We meditate upon these things. I don't need to tell anyone that I'm a Christian. Am I right or am I right? I don't need to tell anyone. Because what? In my way of walking, in my way of talking, in my way of expressing my faith, in my way of showing love, in my way of being pure, they are going to see the difference between me and those outside. I won't have to walk with a billboard here. I'm a Christian. I serve the Lord. I love God. My life is of God. No, I won't need that because my life will show that. That's why he says it will be profiting to all. Others will benefit from my living a life that is pleasing unto God. Other people will also profit from it. They will see the difference and say, I want to be like that. What do I need to do to be like that? What do I need to, what are the steps? What, 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 what? How, how? In order to see that power of God working also in my life, what do I need to do? When Paul and the others were in prison and God did the miracle, set them free, and they came out, we see that the guards, the first thing they asked was, what? We we just saw the whole prison shake. Everyone came out, and now my life is in danger because I'm the guard, and you all are out of prison, but I need salvation. I understood that you serve the holy and mighty living God. What do I need to do? To be saved. That is the question people are going to ask. But they will never ask you that question if you're not practicing all of these things. If I'm not meditating on the Lord. If I'm not loyal to Him. If I'm not walking in integrity before Him. Amen. Verse 16, he finishes and he says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, you shall both save yourself and the people that hear you. He calls him here, take heed unto thyself. He calls him to reflect. It is important to always reflect in our lives. To reflect means to take a stop, pause for a moment and think, where am I in my walking with the Lord? Am I still walking the right path? Am I still doing the things according to his word? And when you reflect and think, you will see, oh, maybe I I deviated a little bit to the left. I need to straighten it. Maybe you'll see, oh, I'm, I'm not that person of integrity that I was before. I need to be more inter- in, in, integrity before the Lord. And you will straighten out those things. Reflect constantly and say, Lord, here's my life. Help me to walk according to your ways. Let us stand to our feet this morning.
and in perseverance, amen, it calls us to be people that persevere continually before the Lord. Let us stand to our feet and let us pray and thank the Lord this morning for his word, amen. And if in any area of your life you feel that you lack integrity, you lack structure, you, you lack the discipline that God was asking Timothy to have, this morning the Lord is here and he can touch your life, amen. Father God, we give you praise, we give you thanks, Lord. We thank you for your word, Father, for your word is the truth that sets us free. Your word is the, the object, that power that gives us structure and integrity in our lives, Lord. Father, you know our hearts, you know our ways, Lord. As you, as, you have called Timothy also, oh Lord, to be an example in, in word, in conversation, in behavior, in faith, purity, and love, Father God, in every aspect of our, of our lives also, Lord, we want to be this example. We want to be, O oh Lord, that, with that, 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 that way that you use, the instrument that you use for others to see that the work that you have done in our lives and draw them near to your feet, draw them near to your presence, O oh Lord. But in order for that to happen, Father, we need your blessing. We need your anointing in our lives. Work in our hearts, Father, there where we lack structure, there where we lack, O oh Lord, meditation in our lives, dedication, Father, give us spirit of perseverance, O oh Lord, in order to God to seek you more, that you may have a full move in our hearts and in our lives, Father. In Jesus' name we pray, O oh God, and we give you thanks, Lord. Amen and amen. God bless you all this morning. Amen.